I hope you guys are ready for a new day of some very good talks. I was listening to some talks yesterday, and uh, there are quite good level on these talks. So let's see if I can do anything around that. So I'm going to be talking about large-scale uh, DEM tiling for QI, QGIS uh, workflows, um, and a little bit about the use cases for this, uh, and what challenges we faced during this process, and how they were dealt with. So. Just quickly about me, that photo is way bigger than I expected, sorry. <laughs> so my name is Tobias, uh, I'm a software engineer. I have a background from uh, startups, and mainly within gambling and sports betting, which is, as you know, the most, not the most rewarding industry uh, in the world. So me with along a lot of other companies had a transition into renewables, and I'm now proud to call myself a renewables enthusiast. Um, and my contact information is here, if that's of any interest. Um, so quickly about the company I work for. Uh, we make software for solar developers, mainly like utility scale, ground mounted uh, panels. Um, we are a Norwegian startup. We've been running for about four years, uh, and we are located in Norway. Uh, even though our one and only office is located there, we have a very international team with more than half of the people uh, not from Norway, which makes for a really good work environment. And we are also looking to expand this. So uh, yeah, please feel, feel free to reach out uh, later. Um, Okay, so to give you guys a little bit of context why uh, this is relevant for us, um, and by this I mean uh, DEM uh, tiling, uh, digital elevation models, um, and a little bit of context of how it's used. So for solar developers, one of the main challenges is finding land, uh, and also value, sorry. <laughs> evaluating that land. Uh, and there's a lot of hurdles that can mean that a land is not suitable for solar development. And that can be, yeah, poor s solar radiation is the most obvious one, but there's other ones such as uh, slope, uh, connection to the power grid. Um, and a lot of our customers have GIS experts on their team, uh, but not everyone do, and they also require to be able to use it. Uh, although there's a lot of very good uh, GIS tools, such as QGIS, obviously, which we do use a lot in our work, that can be a bit too complex for some of our users who doesn't have the necessary background. So we have a lot of uh, GIS, GIS experts with us to make that process a little bit better for them. Um, so back to the hurdles. Uh, another big hurdle is a lot of incomplete data. Like if you build the perfect solar park, everything is like the sun is shining every day, it's in the middle of the desert, but you don't have connection to the power grid and you have nowhere to send this power. So this results in almost seven, roughly around 73% of all man hours uh, spent on site development ends up in projects that never get sent to uh, permit application, uh, which is a lot of time wasted, which is also what we're trying to lower. Um, and of course, like the last hurdle is then uh, permitting, but as I'm sure you do find permitting as boring as I do, we are not going to talk about that. Um, the main thing of our product, there are like three pillars. It's like the prospecting and evaluation of land where you find and procure the land, and design and visualization where you uh, basically visualize the potential solar park and you can get analysis and bring that to the landowner to get a contract signed and so on. And then also organization and collaboration, which is a lot of our solar developers has tens if not even hundreds of projects running in parallel at the same time. Um, so they need a way to organize this. But for me and the team I work on, we work with prospecting and evaluation, which is also where most of our data comes in and also the part, yeah that I find, <laughs> I can't say for all of our teams, but I found that team the most exciting, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you do too. Um, so what are we actually trying to achieve? Um, we want a quick and easy and accessible elevation data at scale, uh, so our users can pan, view, zoom uh, around without necessarily needing an extreme deep knowledge of GIS data and the tools that goes around it. Uh, so what we kind of want to end up with, let's see, 
possible to play this? I'll do that manually, yeah. Um, let me see. So this um, is a screen recording from our product where we have implemented uh, a DEM on top of a base layer to make this 3D model with the, um, the incline and the elevation. This can, of course, also be achieved in QGIS because underneath is just a display on the underlying, underlying data. Uh, we use Mapbox for this, but yeah, it's uh, what tool you use is less important. Um, Okay, uh, so why is this actually important? There's, uh, to show you an example, there are two photos of uh, the Madrid airport. Uh, the top one is taken with a very low resolution DEM, uh, and the bottom one is with a high res one. And we also added a terrain exaggeration of five. That basically means that every uh, unevenness bump top will just multiplied by five, so you can see the unevenness of the runway. Luckily, none of us has to land on this, uh, but the representation is way better here. So the importance for this is that slope, uh, aside from sun, uh, is one of the biggest indicators of cost when you build utility scale uh, solar parks. So it's very important, like the most optimal land is like a completely flat and then more uh, incline, of course, leads to higher cost because it's more expensive to build, and you also get um, like they're less efficient because you get better radiation on a flat surface. Um, okay, so the data in question uh, it's collected by an airplane attached with a lidar, uh, flying over um, mountains, land areas. Uh, building a 3D model of the topography, and they're stored as individual TIFF files. So for this particular data set, uh, we have almost 100,000 different TIFF files, uh, leading up to about 20 terabytes of data. Uh, and each individual TIFF file, some of them are nice and squares, some of them have this shape, uh, and they're also, yeah, so, sorry, yeah, and the data set is um, covering almost all of the US landmass. I say almost because there are some holes here. So everything in red is covered, everything is blue. Well, this blue is water, but this blue is <laughs> checked and also not covered. Um, and this data is, has different projections. Um, we can do this with various projections, but for this particular data, they're set in different UTM zones. And that's okay when you open a single TIFF file because it's a very localized file, maybe for a town or a city, and the projection doesn't matter that much because you're not gonna view the entire thing at once. Uh, but we want to convert all of these to XYZ tiles and make a complete layer out of all of this elevation data. And we need to use uh, EPSG uh, 3857, which has a projection that is more yeah, it's not so localized. Uh, so one of the issues we're running into here, if you see the gr there's two green grids here, uh, which represent two different UTM zones, and the red square in the middle is the tile we want to create. Uh, and when the data is not aligned, we would need to, because it's not gonna be a one-to-one -one match between the pixels or the like measuring points in the TIFF files and the pixels we want to make for the, for the tiling. So we need to take uh, a sampling um, and then if an area is covered by more than one um, uh, more than one file, we will take the average of the underlying files. And also some of the files will be missing data uh, and these are just set to zero. Uh, mostly they're missing because yeah, US is a big country and they haven't <coughs> surveyed the entire uh, landmass, but it's a fairly good coverage of it. Um, also the TIFF files will come yeah, in this format, you see, uh, it's not very user friendly, and if you want to, to yeah, sorry. Um, one of the disadvantages with these TIFF files is that they, they're just a fixed resolution, they're just a representation of data, which means that if you want to view a small area, it's all fine because you have one file, and if you zoom within that file, you only need to load that one file into whatever system you're using. But if you want to zoom out or view a really large area, uh, you need to load in quite a lot of files. And if you want to watch all of the US, that will 
yeah, you will need to load in all the files. So it's not uh, exactly ideal uh, for someone who needs to view a lot of data uh, in a lot of different places. Um, so for us to do this, we uh, need to convert um, this into XYZ tiles. Uh, and our process for this is start opening the TIFF files in QGIS. Uh, and what we need to figure out here is at what zoom level um, does the size of the TIFF file roughly align with the tiles we want to create. And this is simply to make the data transformation later more efficient, because if you start at a zoom level um, that's way too far out, you need to load way too many files in to start creating these different tiles. And that's extremely uh, resource intensive and yeah, going to be very expensive when you're going to um, go through 20 terabytes of data. Um, so the zoom level we ended on was roughly about 12. I'm not sure if you can see it, but each one of these tiles is a zoom level 12 tile. And you'll see the size is more or less the same size. It doesn't need to be accurate because this is just a setup for the initial batch job that comes later. Um, so the details of this particular data set um, will let us create uh, tiles down to zoom level 16 where one pixel in the tile will roughly represent one data point uh, in the original data. And for us interested, one data point in this data is roughly uh, one square meter. So yeah, an area one times one meter, and then which covers all of the US. Um, so for us, um, not for the US, not for us, <laughs> there is about 120,000 uh, Zoom level 12 tiles. Um, and for us, we will start one batch job for each one of these tiles. Um, this means that one batch job will handle all the data for these underlying tiles, but also for every Zoom level below that. So for Zoom level 13, there will be four tiles within that Zoom level 12 tiles and downwards and downwards until Zoom level 16, where you will have about 256 uh, tiles. So the total number of tiles we need to go through is roughly 40 million uh, tiles. So uh, we are very happy about cloud computing because if I were to do this on my computer, uh, it will take us uh, probably longer than what I've lived <laughs> so far. Um, so starting all of these jobs uh, as batch jobs means that if one of them fail, uh, it's quite easy to, to figure out what data we need to recalculate because um, the whole job doesn't fail. We can just rerun these particular things, these particular tiles. Uh, and when you run 120,000, no, sorry, when you run yeah, 120,000 jobs, something is likely to fail here and there. And it happened on several occasions. Uh, and not always because of our problems, but sometimes um, just, yeah, some of the batch jobs just disconnected from the internet and crashed. Uh, and just going to throw Amazon under the bus here. Uh, but also, you know, other interesting things that happens when you do this is that some warning flags go up, go up at uh, AWS, and they're just sending us a friendly email just to make sure that we are actually intending to do what we're trying to do, uh, because this costs us several thousands of dollars to run this data set. Uh, so just making sure that we are not wasting all our money. So they are, yeah, good for reaching out. Um, so what we end up with here is a full complete data set of these kind of tiles. So I'm not sure if there are any locals here, but does anyone recognize where this is taken from? This is, um, yeah, I'm actually not going to pronounce this, but uh, uh, Thank you. <laughs> so this is the highest peak in uh, Slovakia, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and this tile on the top here represent, uh, uh, represent uh, the elevation in the form of an RBG uh, PNG. So it, the way it's done is that each pixel in this image is, um, as I'm sure you know, uh, comprised of three values, uh, one for red, one for green, and one for blue. Uh, and these things together, uh, using this formula, can um, give us the height of that particular point. So if you combine these two 
uh, layers, you'll be able to create uh, a 3D model or also just a topography uh, or whatever way you want to do it to uh, represent the height and the slope of these particular areas. Um, and yeah, that is it. A little bit under time. I probably spoke a bit too fast, so uh, I hope it was clear. But uh, any questions? Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. So, are there any questions? Raise your hand. Yeah. Um, maybe one question, why not to use Cloud Optimal's GeoTIFF for this kind of task? Why we didn't use GeoTIFFs? A Cloud Optimal's GeoTIFF. Because I have a really good experience that if they are sliced to tiles, if they have internal overview, I run OK, the Slovakia is much time smaller than uh, all US, but it is really pow powerful tool for me okay. to work uh, with the DEM. Okay, I'm actually going to let uh, my colleague answer that question because he has a way deeper uh, technical competen competence on this particular subject. Uh, we, we found that uh, that's a good idea when we are like within QGIS, but we wanted to do something which uh, Mapbox and QGIS both handles easily. And uh, we are better with XYZ tiles when it comes to 3D rendering within Mapbox. Cool. Uh, some more questions? We have some, uh, some more time. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, I was wondering uh, how do you actually store all the data? What's your uh, network infrastructure? If you have just a local server or yeah, how do you access it efficiently? You just take it. <laughs> uh, like in uh, S3 buckets. S3 buckets. In uh, AWS. Uh, S, um, simple. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if you do that, uh, like uh, like based on yesterday talk, the new features, like you can directly connect to S3, uh, and that's pretty nice. But if you want to do something which is like uh, which is easier to do um, by some other tools which you use, you can just put a proxy between the S3 and the QGIS, and then you can load what you want. So, like you don't necessarily have to load the actual 3D view. You can load, load the slope and just compute whatever terrain related quantity you want to visualize and then just load that into QGIS, which I found pretty cool. Okay, some some more questions? Uh, or not? I would like to ask, so you've shown that uh, you have this um, encoded elevation pictures and uh, ortho photos, so you uh, then combine them somehow together or you use uh, the one above the um, uh, elevation layer directly in QGIS? It uh, depends a bit what you want to achieve. If you want to like create a 3D model, you can combine it together. But if you also want to just, if you want to like show the slope or the elevation, you have different setups. But this particular one is to just show the the height. So like the image on below is like show the um, how it looks like, while the image on top, you use the values from this to make the one on the bottom um, like apply the height values to it. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, but like you are loading them as uh, like elevation surfaces in QGIS or uh, like uh, how, how do you use this uh, encoded like elevation layer? Uh, the, 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 like what uh, they have done with like in we use the same tiles in Mapbox and QGIS and in Mapbox we do the 3D but in QGIS uh, we visualize the slope. So between once we have these tiles, we can uh, calculate the slope. We can like we calculate the elevation and then calculate the slope based on neighboring tiles. Or, but, but that's what I've tried like last week. But we can also just like uh, once we have the encoded version, we can code it back to height and then set that as a terrain level and then create the 3D. So it like depends what you want to visualize because sometimes you don't actually care about how it looks like you just care whether it's too steep or not too steep. And those, like the R channel is of course the, the highest, um, like it controls, like the, it, it, the B channel is the one which is like 10 centimeter vertical accuracy because it's multiplied by 0 0.1 and then the others are like bigger and bigger steps. So it's, it's like use case dependent how you 
load. But uh, just if you just want height, then just uh, decode it back and then it's height. Cool. Any more questions? Uh, if not, then uh, thank you very much for the presentation. And here's a little gift from us. Thank you. Thank you.